This is my show you to use. Hey, hey, hey. Awesome. Mike's Daily Podcast. Bye, Myriad of Podcast listeners. I hope you are brothers and sisters that are Mike's Daily Podcast. Enjoying this podcast on the weekend or the weekday or whatever day you're listening to this show. I'm going to tell you some stuff that's going to help you. So keep listening, even though I'm singing and it may be a little bit repulsing to you, but that's okay. You know why? Because I'm going to end it right now. So you're done by to you. I had a Mike's Daily Podcast. Busy Saturday thus far. And I think I've decided that Mike's I'm going to stop daily looking at emails podcast. on the weekends, period. Yeah. Just stop it all together because it, 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 I'm working too much, everybody. Working too much. And the only way, and everybody tells me this that knows me. People at work don't tell me this. Because they're like working too And they're busy And they, they want me to do their jobs Ha <laughs> ha Did I say that out loud? Ha <laughs> ha I did on my podcast Because it's FF episode 2277 2277 I'm Mike And I've been doing this podcast For over 10 years now And this podcast I do daily But then I get interrupted But so far we've gone uh, I think five days, six days in a row. I think, yeah, started every day since Tuesday. So whatever that is, that's five. Okay, good. But I think I'm going to take tomorrow off. Sunday is the day of rest and the Lord saith so. So we should all and try not to work. But then some of us can't. Because we got stuff to do Because we got to do other people's jobs Oh yeah And because I did that little stupid thing Called answering emails Don't read your emails on Sunday How about we all try that for once Maybe somebody Somebody further up the manager chain Will get the hint And we will And here's today's podcast picture Actually Isn't it interesting How some stuff in the Bible is absolutely true today that like if we followed it it would actually help us not only spiritually but health wise like taking a sunday off and shutting down everything and doing no work at all would actually help your life would actually help you be healthier but the podcast picture is of me with someone who makes me feel very happy and healthy and that would be my lovely lady friend that's right basil the boxer Whenever my lovely lady friend came over He would bark and be so happy And he would make, he'd go wow, wow. He loved her so Oh, the late great Basil the Boxer A week ago We had a memorial for him We remembered it Because it had been a year since he'd passed So now it's been a year and a week Not to count Every single day since he's been gone But sometimes you do that when you miss someone and that's all right. That's all right. The last thing we got to do is criticize ourselves or anyone else when we're going through a grieving process. And in the sunshine, in the summertime, you got to remember a couple of things to be safe in the sun. UV rays are there even when it's cold or cloudy outside. It's best to avoid the sun between... 10 and 4 Remember 10 and 4 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. When the sun rays are strongest Even when it's cloudy outside You can still get sunburned And get skin damage And skin damage from the sun Is also cumulative Even short periods of exposure Running errands Or walking the dog Are adding to the damage That can lead to skin cancer Unprotected exposure to UV rays Is a major risk factor For skin cancer about 90% of non-melanoma skin cancers are caused by UV radiation Also, if you are vacationing in places like Hawaii, the Caribbean, or Indonesia You need to be especially careful in the sun The sun's rays are more intense the closer you get to the equator Leading to more rapid sun damage Environmental factors like water and sand can also increase your likelihood 
of burn damage. And then also remember that surf. Oh, by the way, because sun, why about sun and water? Because the surfaces can reflect up to 80% of UV radiation. So the sun's rays are hitting you twice. And then, as this is the summertime, and by the way, I will be on talking about the summer on the radio. And there's a link to the radio station I will be on And the radio show is going to be on, by the way, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow And every Sunday, it's been that way for over a year So check that out, mikesdailypodcast.com for the link to that Clothing is the best first line of defense against the sun It provides consistent protection that doesn't wear off over time Minimize sun exposure And that you could do a rotation An ultraviolet protection factor rating Of at least 30 50 or more is better That's with the clothing A UPF rating is given to fabrics That protect you from the sun And indicates what fraction of the sun's Ultraviolet rays can penetrate a piece of fabric Don't forget to wear a hat And you know what, that's tough for me Because I really do not like I mean the perfect hat Would probably be Like a Gilligan's hat that Is protective all around your Head So it's protecting your nose Protecting your neck The back of your neck And then everybody else though is wearing Those uh, or, or if you're a woman You can wear those nice wide brimmed hats Makes you look all classy And guys we, there's the safari hat And I hate that safari hat I hate wearing that But that's, that's It's helpful And then of course As we go outside a cafe anyway We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10 The last place on earth It's the, it's the baseball cap It's the cap The trucker's cap People wear those Oh there's the cowboy hat If you feel like wearing a cowboy hat at the beach I just, I hate wearing hats But in the podcast picture today With my lovely lady friend I am wearing a skull cap A snow cap Snow hat One of those hats to keep Top my bald head warm But definitely that's good advice Uh, And beware Be aware that even people who tan Instead of burn And those of any ethnic background Can be vulnerable to sun damage Chemical sunscreens work like a sponge Absorbing the sun's rays Uh, And then sun blocks Which are physical sunscreens Work like a shield sitting on the surface of the skin And deflecting the sun's rays When choosing a sunscreen Be aware that some ingredients have been found to be harmful To coral reefs and marine animals When they get in the water Look for products with recommended safe ingredients And then there is... The SPF, the sun protection factor The Skin Cancer Foundation recommends a broad spectrum sunscreen With an SPF of at least 15 for daily use And 30 or higher for extended time outdoors And I always try and grab the 30 Something 30 or more I've heard 50 50 works but it's like not That vastly different from 30 But I don't know Applying sunscreen 15 minutes before you go outside Why, does that help get into your skin? Help it make make it more effective? Maybe The tops of the feet, you want to put sunscreen on that The neck, ears, and the top of the head To protect your lips, apply a lip balm or lipstick That contains sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher Reapply sunscreen every two hours And immediately after swimming or sweating Which I don't get because How can you apply it if you're all wet? And if you try and dry yourself off and you're sweating That doesn't help Like you've got to try and stop the sweating Otherwise the sunscreen doesn't get in there It's annoying 
And then protect your eyes The sun can also damage the skin around your eyes and your vision UV radiation can lead to skin cancers on the eyelids And premature aging of the delicate skin around your eyes The sun can also cause cataracts and macular degeneration So wear sunglasses and be sure you choose ones that block 99% of UVA and UVB light At least that much And for kids, the American Academy of Pediatrics says that you should dress children in clothing that covers their arms and legs and has a tight weave. Protective clothing with an ultraviolet protection factor is even better. Top off with a hat with a three inch brim to protect the face, ears and back of the neck. They also say apply an SPF of 30 or higher. And keep babies younger than six months out of direct and indirect sunlight Shaded under trees, an umbrella, or a stroller canopy And that came from the Costco connection In a recent magazine they did in time for the summer It was written by uh, Debbie L. Miller Thank you, Debbie L. Miller Hey, in this crazy, crazy world Where we work a lot and we should work less Problem solving is probably what we do most at work Oh, and I don't have that book with me that I usually read on Saturdays About learning good lessons from bad leaders I don't have, it's in the car So we'll have to wait maybe next week I needed a break from that book I think I've read most of that book on the podcast anyway So maybe I won't read any more from it Anyway, that E. Arthur Self, PhD Very helpful if you're Looking to be a boss or looking to, let's say, replace your boss Or replace your job because you don't like your boss Some very helpful tips in that book that I have read from in the past And by the way, I'm pretty much dropping Podomatic I'm no longer posting the podcast to Podomatic It is terrible these days And I hope they get their act together Because I've been with them for uh, 12 years And it's sad to see them fall apart So trying to unfall apart To bring stuff back together To ravel the unraveled To unravel Well, to unravel the messes in our lives To work through problems The first step Should learn to define the problem Yes, deeply understanding a problem through research Leading to better solutions Research, research, research Research can include interviewing Reading books and emails Analyzing financial data Searching your organization's intranet Organizing your findings All of that can help with defining the problem Putting a name to it Then there's brainstorming Creating a myriad of new solutions quickly In group brainstorms Allow everyone to state ideas Don't belittle them Don't don't <laughs> don't insult the ideas No matter how idiotic they are Appreciate all input and avoid criticism Then organize solutions into groups Around common themes Analyzing Then using discipline thought processes To evaluate each possible solution Besides listing their costs and benefits You might apply deductive reasoning Game theory and the rules of logic Including fallacies to them Ah, what does all that mean? Look it up, I don't know Managing risk, anticipating and trying to avoid the downsides of key solutions Your team can list potential risks Rate how likely each is Predict a date by which each might either happen Or no longer be an issue And devise ways to reduce those risks Managing risks Putting a name to it And deciding The ability to decide on a solution And move forward with it After an appropriate amount of time And research and analysis Of possible solutions And feedback from team members A designated decider Must choose and implement a solution A designated decider That's usually me and by the way, a des- when there is a designated decider, don't set that decider up to be a scapegoat. Make that decider win. Because when the decider wins, the whole team wins. 
And it's best to get make sure that the cider has all the information and is is ready to do the best job as a decider as possible. Finally, managing emotions. Applying emotional intelligence in order to improve your team members' ability to think clearly. This requires you to recognize emotions in yourself and others, manage feelings, and channel emotions into useful work in problem solving. Managing your emotions outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Thank you, CMOE, the Center for Management and Organization Effectiveness, CMOE.com for that helpful bit of information about improving problem solving skills. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Did you see the last podcast picture? It was from Podcastro Valley, the Willow Trail. Beautiful. I took this nice hike last weekend and ju- it, you know despite how hot and warm it is and the wildfires going on there's still some green spots around podcastro valley i posted a picture standing in front of some poison ivy poison ivy sure is actually poison ivy is now starting to all turn red so you can see it quite quickly and avoid it whereas in the winter when it's all green and lush you sometimes don't necessarily know that you've just brushed up upon a dangerous poison oak leaf but now it stands right on out because it's this bright red or pinkish red too very colorful so avoid that but enjoy podcaster valley but we're at podcaster valley 10 today and look who's outside of cafe anyway Hello, Michael Mash, it's Madame Rudovigas. Thank you for all those tips about avoiding sun and skin cancer and problem solving. Oh! You're welcome. I'm glad you found it helpful. I did. Oh! I found helpful today watching a couple of interesting videos that the guy called the carpet bagger. <laughs> I think his name is Jacob. He does these, po- and he reminds me of my friend Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, who has been on the podcast at the segment Addendum with Kevin with me a couple of times. But the carpet beggar, has, he's seen some amazing things. Like he went on a Bigfoot tour. I think this was in Missouri, Brantford. And this tour was crazy. He was on one of these like monster trucks sitting in the back. And they take you up into the hills and it's like a beautiful drive and you're looking at these cows, these Scottish Highland cows. And then all of a sudden they stage this crazy, like there's these meth makers in the mountains, these crazy drug makers. They're making drugs and then suddenly they discover Bigfoot and they do this weird thing in a hangar. You, the, the car the truck goes into this hangar and sits there like a big garage and through the use of uh, playing back this video movie thing where you're seeing like Bigfoot attacking these people but you don't actually see Bigfoot except for at one point they have these big feet come out of the ceiling and hit the top of the truck I I, I watched it I, I had to show it to my lovely lady friend who's in today's podcast picture because I was like, you've got to see this. This is an actual thing that you can go on in Brantford, Missouri. Bizarre. And then at the end, uh, Jacob is trying to explain what he just saw. And he said, well, so we saw Bigfoot kill a bunch of drug dealers. And I guess that means that Bigfoot is good. And if you're good, he'll be nice to you and save your life. But if you're a drug dealer, he's going to freaking kill you. (laughs) Uh, And then he also showed this thing. He he likes to go on these haunted houses, those rides, like at the boardwalk where you ride in a little car and there are haunted houses and things jump at you and stuff. And he, oh, some of those rides are so silly. It just looks so cheesy, but... They're so fun at the same time. And then these, all these museums that he's gone to. Oh, the Wizard of Oz Museum. That was interesting. It's somewhere in Kansas, I guess, where the hometown is of Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. 
I think that's where it is. And just all the history and all the remakes that were made of the movie and then the book that Frank Baum wrote and all the editions he I wrote I I read several of his books when I was a kid cuz I was like what there's more than one book there's other there's like not only the wizard of oz there's the scarecrow of oz there's the uh, pumpkin head of oz and all these other things so anyway cafe anyway check it out he also goes to a thing called meow wolf in Santa Fe, New Mexico That's fascinating Very creative A lot of artists came together Made this interesting It's like an art installation But you walk through it And all these really bizarre things happen And they built another one in Vegas And he, by the way He went to this uh, place in Vegas New York, New York I don't think you'd ever want to stay at New York, New York The hotel in Vegas Not the nicest rooms For what you pay But Anyway Cafe anyway We're outside What else were you saying Madame Rutabaga Nothing Okay Do you ever watch Carpetbagger Video thing With Jacob Yes Do you ever go to Kansas Yes You ever been in a tornado No Look who else is here Hello there Mike This is Valentino The parking attendant and this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, this show was very interesting. Day. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that? Thank you, guys. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer. If you'd like to chime in about anything we covered on the podcast today, you can call me 336-MM-DAILY. That's 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM as in Mike Matthews. Daily as in what this podcast has been now for five days in a row. Look at us, but I think tomorrow we'll take a day off. Is that okay? Good. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.